So, this is episode two. I don't... I, one. Well, yeah, episode one. I suppose it... We don't We've really need to keep... episode zero, this is episode we one. We don't need to really keep record no one cares. of it. No. So, this is, this is like an opinion slash review episode. Uh, today, we'll be doing Jurassic World 2, which I am here. I am joined by Martin. Hello. And I'm joined by Jamie. Yo. Now, we three went to see this one together. Now, I suppose before we get into it, we have to get into the point of how many times do we have to say, spoilers, Mm. that it will drum into people's head that there will be spoilers in this. If you haven't seen it yet, well, that's on you really, because it's been out for quite a while now. But still, yeah, spoiler alert. Stop listening now if you haven't seen it and you don't want it spoiled. Martin. Yes. Do you want to say that there will be spoilers? There may be. There are parts of this film I haven't seen. Wait, what? You you went to the cinema to see it with us. Yeah, but I also left the cinema to go to the toilet, and I missed about five minutes of it. Uh, Oh, you did, yeah. 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 Don't want a great deal. But there's there's still spoilers in this. So it was during the beach evacuation. Yes. Yeah. Oh, spoiler alert! Hey, I did say we did. We have said spoilers. Yes, there there will be. Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. You bastard! No (laughs) comments saying, "Oh my god, I can't believe this spoiler for us." However, I use the term spoiler lightly because, unlike Jamie, I don't know about you, Martin, but I watched all the trailers Mm -hmm. as they were released, Mm -hmm. and there is only one element of the entire film that wasn't spoiled for me through watching the trailers. The trailers for me showed everything. To be honest, they did for me is... Oh, I think I know the bit you're referencing. I, well, yeah, no, yeah. yeah, well, it is a spoiler. All spoilers will be revealed in this. There is a subplot about a girl. Now, that wasn't shown in the trailers. No, no it But wasn't. everything else... I could piece the whole film just through the trailers from that, beginning, middle, end. All of it, apart from the little girl's subplot. But that's for, not new, though. Yeah, they, to, they were doing that in the 90s. To me, that doesn't not say so much about extent. the... Not to That doesn't say so much about the film to me, more the trailers. Trailers tell you too much nowadays. They do, they do. And this is also... like I don't feel that a franchise like Jurassic Park needs... Um, so many different trailers. Like you know what you're going to see, and you you kind of know what's going to happen. You know it's about dinosaurs, mm. and that's what you want to see. No shit. So, why they had to have a number of different trailers on the run up to its release, all showing to build different, up hype. all showing different things, which you can cut and chop it together, bang together, you can see it like. I can see from the trailers what they intended to do, which is go on and save the animals. Um, that Claire and Owen were not together anymore. And that they'll go to the island to try and rescue them. But they've been double-crossed. See, the double-crossing thing didn't really come across until the final trailer, though. Yeah, but it's still part of the trailers, isn't mm. it? And it still showed like, oh look, they've been double crossed and they've been left for dead. Yeah. Figure that part out. And you know, everything everything else uh was figured out. You figured out that they were auctioning the dinosaurs off. That they'd built a new dinosaur from uh different DNAs and the, the dinosaurs escaped into the world. Yeah. That uh that there's some escaping. And that uh, Owen and Claire survived, but then that was kind of obvious anyway. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the auction wasn't going to go to plan. If out. either of them two are going to die, it's going to be in the next film. Yeah. And <clears throat> and everything. And it was kind of like everything was shown apart from the little girl's plot. Yeah, that did... Um... When it when the f- the subplot first came out of nowhere, that did take me by surprise. But by halfway through the film, with when she'd been in it, I was like, I'd figured it out. I was like, 
Hmm. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. So, we'll start at the beginning. That's um, a novel concept. There's a bit more coke in there. You want it? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> don't snort it all at once. <laughs> oh, wow. When I said there was a bit, there was literal just a drivel in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we do not condone drug use. No. Well, well, well I don't. <laughs> caffeine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway. So. Uh, right. I found the first five minutes were brilliant. The whole part where the T Rex, when they're in the park, they're mm. going to get the bone. From mm. the Indominus Rex in the bottom of the, <laughs> yeah, the they went to get the bone. That, oh my goodness. <laughs> and, you know, it was tense again. T Rex, the big scary creature, like from the previous. The way it burst out of the shrubbery and just a big head, it, that was fantastically done. Yeah. <laughs> the lighting. It's like, you'll get us a shrubbery. <laughs> oh, for God's <laughs> sake, wrong film. <laughs> Um, it's anyway, just a herring in there, I'll be yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that bit I thought uh, was brilliant, and no arguments for me. Mm. Um, you two, them first five minutes. That was all right. That was that old school Jurassic Park. It, it was, was very old school. It did the thing. Now, where? What about you? What I think you? yeah, I, I did enjoy that bit. I mean, I did the whole. The bit where the T-Rex is pulling on the, the, the rope ladder and they escaped at the last second just for the Mosasaur to pop out and grab them. I saw that coming a mile away. Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of... I mean, you saw the shadow of the Mosasaur anyway But the, the while they were in there. The only thing I really had a, an actual problem with... I mean, the, the Mosasaur was predictable, but I didn't have a problem with it. The main thing I had a problem with was the guys in the sub... You never actually saw what happened to them. You know, obviously, the Mosasaur killed them. Yeah. But you didn't see anything. You were just well, like... Well, it's I know. that kind of thing of less well, is more. that's the point. Leaves it to your imagination, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah less is more. It's yeah. kind of like what still bugs me is in um, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park 3, sorry, when they're um, uh, parasailing yeah, uh, and the boat yeah. gets destroyed... You never actually find out what it was that destroyed the boat. Was it pterosaurs? Was it the Spinosaurus? What What was it? Well, that's, that's the whole Shut point. Me. It's not. It's not what destroyed it. It's the fact that it was destroyed. That's the. It point. It wouldn't be the Spinosaur. No, because you've just seen that. Well, that and it's too far out. Mm. So what was it? It was the fog. It was ghost pirates. <laughs> was it Stephen King's The Mist? Yeah. No, it was Stephen King's Fog. Stephen King did it. Just by himself. <laughs> yeah. With his pen. Yeah. Or a typewriter. Bi-ro. There you go. Job I done. can't see Stephen King being a biro user. I don't know. Like it would be like a gel pen. Parker no, pen. a fountain pen. Yeah, Parker pen, fountain pen. A quill. Pen. Yeah, a quill. <laughs> with like a little pot of ink. In his inkwell. No. That'd be interesting. Anyway, <laughs> back on topic. Yeah, back on topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're all agreed that the first five minutes were... We're pretty darn good. Mm. Yeah. So, then, from there, we're going on to... We're going on to Claire. And she's running a little business of trying to save the animals from the imminent threat of the Mm. island. Oh, yeah, of course. Which is a volcano. Now, this is where it starts to, to throw me. Because in the lost world... Sorry, Jurassic World. She is oblivious to them. She calls them pretty much like things. They're not animals. She pretty much calls them assets throughout the entire film. Until she like cradles a dying one in her arms. Mm. And then she cradles Owen Grady in In her arms. Yes, and he he rubs off on her a bit. I'm (laughs) sure he does. (laughs) Behave! Um, Yeah. um, So... Yeah. Now, she's gone from that to these are animals and we need to save them. It's like, hang on. It, it's quite the flip flop there. She's gone from blah to I care enough. That's happened before. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park to the Lost World. John Hammond. 
capitalist, wants to sell, uh, make money on the park and all that. And in the second one, he wants these dinosaurs conserved to the point where Ian Malcolm even says you went from capitalist to naturalist in four years. That's quite impressive. Yeah, it's a case of like John Hammond still wants his park. He still wants his park. He still wants people to see them. That's what he's getting on about. Now on site B, people aren't allowed there. They're, oh. they're not allowed, but he still wants people to be able to witness them, to like see them. Yeah, but he wants them to ro- roam in their natural habitat. Yeah. But it's so. Uh, there's still bottles rattling on this table. Give me that. You, you can leave the one on your mat. It's fine. It's Jamie's fruit shoot that's doing it. And now you're being a penis. It's not making any noise at all, man. Don't try and put the blame on me. <laughs> there you go. You shook the table. In so, Jurassic World. Go on. Jurassic World 2. To Get it right. Ooh. Fallen Kingdom. Ooh. Um, yeah, so she's she's flip-flopped quite drastically from caring nothing to caring about everything. But, I mean, that's not so much of an issue people can change. So, mm. whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, then there's the whole, like, legal procedure of what's going to happen with the island. Do we take the dinosaurs off, or do we leave them on there to perish? Mm. Uh, and that's when we see Jeff Goldblum. I say everyone's favourite Ian Malcolm. The, the legend mm. that is the shirtless wonder. <laughs> yeah, and he believed that the the dinosaurs should stay on. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts? Would you want them to stay on, or would you want them to survive? Well, uh, you've you've re re a second. You've reintroduced them to the world. So you've got an obligation to make sure they're all right. Because it's your fault that they're there again. Mm. I'm with Martin on this one. So if you have if you have created something, you have a responsibility to ensure its well-being. But you say that, but then even in like the <coughs> real world, where they still run tests on animals, hmm. they, they are bred, mm-hmm. they are used for that, and then they are destroyed afterwards. Where if we've got an obligation to for their well-being hmm. why are they being destroyed after we've well, some not, terrible tests on them well they're not testing lipstick and eyeshadow on T-Rexes are they? Everyone I would pay to see pretty that pretty chimpanzee <laughs> T- T-Rex wrenched in Chanel number no. 5 <laughs> but no so, seriously the, the, it's the got act- the London look this <laughs> T-Rex <laughs> T-Rex with black snot that's <laughs> new <laughs> Well, no, seriously, if, if the idea is that they, dinosaurs, had their time, they, they were naturally selected, they died off, that was fine. But we decided we are going to pluck them out of that and we're going to force them back on the planet, planet Earth. So the fact that they have gone against natural selection and they have put them back on the Earth, the fact that they have put them there, they are responsible for the fact that they are back again. So the fact that they're there, you know, they they have yeah. a, an obligation to make sure that they are, you know, well kept yeah. and maintained. So <laughs> then I believe we go on to the the thing of where Claire is called to the mansion of John Hammond's friend. Farmer Hoggett yeah. from Babe. Because <laughs> I can't remember his character name in it. It's been a while since we saw it. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine that herding sheep with a T Rex? That'd be brilliant. Well, that, the sheep that'll do, be... Dino. That'll do. <laughs> There'll just be a load of sheep legs scattered around. The <laughs> field of lamb shank. It'd be brilliant. <laughs> what happened to the sheep? <laughs> On the window. <laughs> or Farmer Hoggett's Land Rover. <laughs> If you're going to die, do it quietly. We're trying to run a podcast here. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, and that's when we first see the girl skitting around and stuff like that. Uh, Farmer Hoggett says that, well, and his friend from Shaun of the Dead. Hey? There's a guy from Shaun of the Dead in there. Which one? Yeah, uh, the businessman. The arsehole guy. Uh, Who's in Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, the arsehole guy. Uh, Oh, what's he called? Um... 
Um, bu- 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 um, oh, God damn it. <laughs> What's he called? His name's not God damn it. Um, uh, it'll come to me because his dad's in Harry Potter. We and should I'll probably know. Pe- we do not blaspheme against religious people here. Yeah. I yeah. do. <laughs> This that's a debate for another day, yeah, Martin. We're on Jurassic World today. Yes. Uh, come on, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, come on, Mike. We're waiting on you, eh? Oh, just give me a second. He's called the name of... You look like you're about to vote on the OG tongue there. Yeah, I'm hoping that it would just like come to me, but um, I don't. The, uh... Isn't it Lockwood or something like that? Lockwood's the name of Farmer Hoggett in it. Yeah, he's the nah. thing. Hoggett Lockwood. <laughs> <laughs> You've got um, uh, Wheaton. No. Uh, Rafe Spall. <gasps> oh, pardon me. You son what? Of Rafe Spall, son of Timothy Spall. And who's he in uh, Ra- Shaun of the Dead? Rafe Spall in Shaun of the Dead. He is uh, the tall teenager that works where Sean works. Uh, what? Um, that answers his phone. Go, oh, you're all right, mate. That's him. Same yeah, guy. Yeah, that's him. That's him. He's lost a lot of weight since then, then. Yeah, he has, and he's grown up a little. Well, mature. Inwards a little. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's him. Oh. Um, and then some so, every day. Well, yeah. Back my ass and call me Ray Small. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rafe. <laughs> uh, uh, you learn something new every day. Carry on. Well, yeah. Uh, Timothy Spall's son, Timothy Spall. Yeah, no, in... Timothy Spall is. Oh, he's, well, he's been in pretty much everything right, as well. Yeah, he's been in a few things. Well, not everything. Maybe not as many things as Samuel Jackson, but quite yeah. a few things. Yeah, that's be. quite a scope on levels of mm-hmm. um, fame. But. A little bit. <laughs> so, we're introduced to him. He says that he, he that they can rescue about 12 species. One of them has to be blue, because he's the last of a kind. Yep. Hmm. Um, which, if that doesn't throw up suspicions anyway, you yeah. know, it's quite like, you, know, you have to get this one. We can get 12, but you need this one. Which makes no sense on the conservation point, because if she's the last of a kind... There's no chance of survival of the species. No, but it's the DNA that... Well, as you find out later on, her DNA is unique. So that's why they actually yeah, need Yeah, we it. know why in reality, but for for the whole conservation of the species but, story, it makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, Claire's just happy that they want that they actually want to do something. Yeah. That they've got land somewhere. She's overlooking the blaring looking, detail here. So they need to get Owen on. So she she drives out to backside of nowhere to find... To a bar. Owen, no, she she drives to find Owen building a cabin. Oh yes, of course. Then they go to a bar together, don't and they? And then they go to a bar, uh, and then they have a little turn and throw. He says that he's not interested, and she says, "Well, Blue, meet me on this plane." <laughs> yeah, well, he, he don't care about Blue. He thinks that they should all just get wiped out. He does. He's just saying that because he doesn't want them to do what. He thinks they're doing well. Either or, mm. so uh, they do go to the plane as well the next day, and he's there. So then, uh, them and their little team go, and they land on the island, and they find the actor Ted Levine, who's put the lotion in the basket from Signs <laughs> of the Lambs. He will always be that guy. Wait, who's he in? in Jurassic Science? World? Have you not seen he... Silence of the Lambs? Yeah, yeah, Bill, Buffalo Bill. Who is he in Jurassic World? He, he's like the main army guy. The bad the the one guy that who likes to pull the teeth. the teeth, yeah. That's him? Yeah. Holy crap. Put the lotion put in the, the basket. basket. That's the same guy. <laughs> That's Jesus the same guy. Christ. Yeah, he's changed. No one put, put that lotion in for him. Or else they get the hose again. See, if I remember. Yeah, I remember as well. I just. Wow. Hmm. Obviously, wow. that's the. We're learning today. Silence of the Lambs is the only thing I've ever seen him again. Obviously, he's so much older in. He was in. Jurassic Kingdom. He was in Monk, the TV series, if you ever watched that. Heard of it, never watched it. And he was in. Uh, Hills of Eyes remake. Right. He was the dad. Thank that. you. 
What, the cannibal dad or the good guy dad? The good guy dad. The one who got burned against the tree or something? Yeah, something like that. I can't remember. Fair it's been enough. a long time. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, and, you know, the, there was always so much shifty about him. He, he's not a conservationist. Hmm. He, he's not about saving species. There's a lot of army people around. So, uh, they go off. They want to get into various places, so they need to go in this building and unlock some things yeah. with the... With a stereotypical computer nerd, mm. which is thin, glasses, shirt. Afraid of his own shadow. Yeah, that kind of thing. Well, I have to kind there of... Were very, there were a lot of stereotypes in this. I have to kind of take issue with that. Because the first computer nerd that they had, basically... He was a fat slob. ...solved the park using a flight simulator. Oh, uh, Lex. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, I know this system, and it's a bloody flight sim. It's just stupid. It's the same graphics as Flight Simulator 95, which I played and was... Which came out two years that. after the film. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But so the that. graphics hadn't changed. Uh, exactly, yeah. Um, Carry on. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and they're doing that. Owen and the girl has to go off and find Blue. And... Lo and behold, this is where the double crossing starts. No. Oh, no. The things that no one ever saw coming. <laughs> so, don't. So, <laughs> them two get locked in the bunker. And then Owen finds Blue. How you do? There's this two and throws. Have, have a treat. Throws a <laughs> Bounces bit of, off a nose. Throws a bit of meat in a face. Fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And then subsequently the army people step in and tranquilize her. Just as he's about to stroke her. And then <laughs> Then there is some more double crossing, which we didn't see coming at all, did we? People? No, of course not. Um And then Owen gets shot with a tranquilizer dart and then the the girl uh, is held at gunpoint and said, if that animal dies, then you will die. Is this before or after I left the cinema to go to the toilet? This would be before. before. Long before. I've slept since then. Yeah. Carry You've on. drank since then. A lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Your eyes are looking a bit crossed. <laughs> yeah. Then the volcano starts erupting, and then people are panicking. Dinosaurs are panicking. Everybody's panicking. Hmm. All the army people are rushing to the docks with whatever dinosaurs have managed to grab hold of. Mm. Um, a what we believe to be the baryonyx. It was a baryonyx. Breaks yes. into the bunker. Mm. Luckily, they they managed to escape. And they leave that poor dinosaur to get roasted. All like, that dinosaur wow. wanted was a way out. Exactly. Um, and I, a bit I think of I say wanted a bit of meat. <laughs> it should have eaten some of that the uh, Owen throw at the raptor. Yeah, through the raptor. Um, and then something happens. That then they get into the 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 sphere, the ball. Mm. While the they're hamster, escaping, the hamster wheel, the hamster ball, mm. gyrosphere. And they like find Owen, but the door closes, so Owen can't get in. And then uh, that's the when the carnotaur comes in, and then. Which needs to be a Jurassic Park regular is Sneaky T Rex comes in, tiptoeing. <laughs> like a it just sm- comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? Like if a, only they'd had a glass of water on the dashboard. Like, yeah. Like third echelon from Splinter Cell had hired this T Rex <laughs> to work for them <laughs> alongside Sam Fisher with the glowing green goggles. Mm. Tiptoes in <laughs> while uh, while too, yeah. Owen is staring at this dinosaur, not even in the, he must have tunnel vision because in his peripherals he didn't see sneaky T Rex tiptoe its way <laughs> up behind this carnotaur and just bite its neck. Yeah, that's like, the thing, it didn't even come up behind the carnotaur, it came in at the side. Came at the side. So everyone and everything has been bred with tunnel vision, mm. including Owen Grady. Maybe he's a dinosaur. He's not as old as, say, me, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old he is. Um, 
So, are you going to Google that now? I am. What, how old Owen Grady is or how old Chris Pratt is? Well, I suppose it's the same thing. Um, yeah, so t kills a dinosaur and then wanders off. Yeah, because it, it roared in triumph and it noticed the volcano was like, oh, bollocks, and ran off. And then... Oh, the hamster... He's 39. Oh, he is older than He is a dinosaur. <laughs> A good-looking dinosaur. How, how old? What's that ginger chick called? Your Bryce Dallas Howard. There we go. Ron Howard's daughter. Who? What? Ron, Ron Howard. Howard. Ron Howard's daughter is a Bryce Dallas Howard. Jocelyn Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Thank you. Is it Cortana? I don't know who Google's Google. Google. I was just saying. Thank you, Google. <laughs> Why had I get on chicken run from that? What the yeah. hell is going on? Carry on. Um, so, the hamster ball starts rolling. Owen obviously runs. Then there's a whole, um, like... 37. 37. <coughs> She's still older than me. Yeah. She doesn't look at her, does she? She... Um, Pretty fit for her age. I'm not going to say anything. She's attractive for her age. That's or his age. <laughs> eh? Or his age. I pass no judgment on him. Who, what, when, why, who, when? Go back anyway, to sleep nine. So, balls rolling down the hill. Classic, <laughs> um, like, end of the world scenario where Owen's running, gets mm. engulfed by the cloud. So you can't see and him. It suddenly breaks out of the it. The cloud, like not like the cloud where we all store our nude photos. <laughs> um, why do you look at me when you said that? Because you're that type. <laughs> Charming. Um, now, this is where it starts getting sketchy again. House of Ball goes over the cliff, smacks into the water. Everyone's all right, luckily. Mm. Dinosaurs falling all around them. Like, how ridiculous. Five Dropping things bullets. from a great height <laughs> and seeing how it lands. Will this T Rex beat this stack of paper? <laughs> it's an <oobleck. laughs> Um And then Owen shows up underwater now. In Jurassic World, mm. oh, they, I remember this discussion. they say, and they showed it on that stupid video with Jimmy Fallon, that the glass on the on the ball can stop a forty caliber bullet or a forty four. I can't mm. remember either mm. or. And they shot it; it was fine. However, underwater. Owen shoots it three times with a 9 mil, I'm guessing, and Looks it like puts three holes into it. Now, which just basically opens it up for dr- to fill up and drown Claire. And you've got many questions to ask. His name is. Number one, what type of ammunition? Full metal Either jacket. or, it's underwater. Full metal jacket, hollow point, steel penetrator. Yes, I said penetrator. Deal with it. I'm guessing <laughs> it's just regular nine mil. Or full metal. Also, how? But how... it's underwater, and if it can't stop out of water, if it can't stop a forty-four, how is it going to stop an underwater nine mil? Be it. But was it a nine? What did he shoot him with? A gun. <laughs> a pistol. That narrows it down to every handgun ever made ever. Either or, even a Desert Eagle underwater wouldn't put a hole in it. Are it we... would put a hole through an encyclopedia into a person. That's not going to Are we anything. really debating the physics of shooting bulletproof glass underwater in a film where they've resurrected dinosaurs? Yes. You prick. Well, <laughs> it's, it's contradicting what I originally said in the in how Jurassic long, World. How long did they say it passed between the two films? Was it three years? Uh, I think it's four years. So four years of... That that ball had been sat out there for four years. And? You don't think there'll be any kind of degradation on the glass? Deterioration? This glass in my window's been here for... Well, I don't know, longer. And Have you shot it with a forty-four? Not yet. <laughs> I like the yes in that sense. Yet. Yeah. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> or even a 9 mil underwater. Yeah. <laughs> But either way, you know, I, I kind of take issue with it. Fair point. All right. Can you agree with that? I can Martin? agree that you take issue with it, but it just still fascinates me that in a film where they've resurrected dinosaurs, Look, that is the thing that bothers you. Take, because, because he... take the dinosaur part out of it and put 
and take the other part into it. He's taking issue with the fact that of something that could actually happen, bulletproof glass being shot underwater, that could happen at any point. So the fact that there's dinosaurs in the film has nothing to do with it. Yeah, ignore the dinosaurs. I'll believe you. Go on, carry on. <laughs> um, then the, the light wash up on the beach and then she starts shouting, say, oh, it was all a lie. It's that's like, oh, the point you've that, gone to the That's where I was peeing. Yeah. Well, she... They... Uh, they get out of the door, they go onto the beach, and then she starts shouting, it was, it was all, all a lie. lie. So you didn't notice that when they locked you in the bunker. <laughs> um, and then they see the dinosaurs being taken off. Then uh, big hunks of rocks start coming out of the volcano and start hitting the ground. I do. So everyone's just making a mad rush for the boat. That's at the end of the dock. Okay. So once the last people get on, they start running towards it. Oh, excuse me. Uh, rocks hitting all around. The gig science dude takes quite a hell of a fall. Yeah. And just get up and run after a moving truck afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Which I suppose in the heat at the moment, maybe you can. Mm. Um, Claire gets into a truck, starts driving off. Owen and the young man. Nerdy dude. Nerdy dude. Uh, run to it. Manage to get on the back. Then happens the, the whole um, speed thing at the end where the truck goes off the end of the pier, front end manages to gain some height, even though that's a heavier end, mm. and get on the back of the boat, which, you know, good for them. They survive. <clears throat> Yet yeah, no one on the boat's like, oh, crap, did you just see that? That yeah, was then... amazing. Everyone's just like walking around doing their own thing like it's normal. And then... Then the sad part. What could have been a sad part, but it was ruined. This, this is the tearjerker. Everybody goes to the back of the boat and sees this poor Brachiosaurus just walking to the end of the pier, moaning like I do. Oh. As the fire slowly <laughs> grows up behind it, and then it stops at the end of the pier, and it is engulfed. By flames. Now, to me, that point right there, sad, mm-hmm. tear jerking moment. Yep, oh, I agree. God, that that tugs on them heartstrings. Then they screwed it. Then, up. then, the showboating appears, where you see through the cloud the silhouette of the brachiosaur that does the whole classic rearing up onto two legs. Like you're expecting to see a little cowboy in the back saying, I owe silver away! <laughs> it would have been more realistic if we had to see a like, silhouette of the dinosaur just curling up and dying, wouldn't it? Or falling over will do. Well, yeah. I don't think it would just curl up into a little ball. Well, think about it this way. If you were being engulfed with burning hot molten rock... I'd go in the water. Yeah, I would. I'd jump right, in the imagine water. Imagine that, but you're stupid. I'd still jump in the water. And, yeah, and it's then, a natural instinct. You don't even have to think about but it. That's the thing is that you, you've got you've got burning rock on the floor. You've got not burning rock in the air. So you're gonna go. I'm going to. Try you've and got get a look. cool water there. But you're forgetting. No. It's a bracket. It was, it's an idiot. It no, was, it's not. It is. And it, even if it were, instinct does not require intelligence. You don't have to be smart to have the instinct. Water means no fire. It was clearly a look back into original Russell Park where... The Brachiosaur rears up to eat the leaves off the trees. It was a moment that that one bit in the smoke did not need to happen. That ruined the whole moment for me. Yeah, it was a a cheap throwback that didn't need to happen. While we're here in the audience going, (gasps) or something in the background, I'm just there shaking my head going, ruined it. Ruined it. it. Killed it. <laughs> well, literally killed it. Yeah. I could imagine you in a real situation like that and the dinosaurs burning to death. Like, fucking show off. <laughs> <laughs> we go, no, no, close the door. We don't need to see that. <laughs> You've ruined it. <laughs> You've ruined your own death. Um. Yeah, so then... Oh, so we need to sneak around this boat for however long it takes to get back to mainland. Uh, they run into the the girl scientists that took with them that are taking care of Blue. 
because, as you um, mentioned, Blue got shot and was critically injured. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, but people know that. Uh, so, oh my gosh, she's lost a lot of blood because she was shot with an actual gun. Mm. And it must have been like a hell of a bullet because that thing can go through bulletproof glass underwater. <laughs> It is like the real deal. <laughs> but it can't go through and through a dinosaur. Did no, it got lodged in a dinosaur. It got lodged in a dinosaur, but not in bulletproof glass. Just saying. Um, so they, they need blood transfusion by a similar kind of predator with only with three fingers, three toes. <gasps> T-Rex. There's one of them in the back. Got one in the back room. I'll go see if we've got one in stock. <laughs> so, Claire and Owen go to do it. Now, again, this is difficult for me. Now, original Jurassic Park and the Lost World, T Rex is the big predator. He's the scary one. She. This. She. She's now just like the comedy value. Well, she's um, tranquilised, isn't she? She's asleep. Yeah, but point. it's a whole, like, how they, they, they poke fun how Claire's, like, on the back of it, like a rodeo. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's like, oh, come on, this this was the T-Rex. This was... Soon changed when she woke up, though, didn't it? Yeah. But, again, it's, it's just making a lighter point of what was once the big bad boss. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but in the first three films, the raptors were also the big bad boss, and as a Jurassic World, they've been trained circus animals. Yeah, now it's like Turner and Hooch, but it's <laughs> Owen and Blue. Like, <laughs> oh God! There will be a TV series after Owen this and Blue. of Owen and Blue Detectives. <laughs> like if we, if, if Miss Marple can still run these days, and Owen <laughs> and Blue will get greenlit. Well, would would Owen play good cop and Blue bad cop? If if Owen didn't get the results, Blue would rip him to shreds. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, they'll <laughs> take down crime, driving their little Jurassic Park jeeps around. She'd need her own fedora. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Marty's shaking his head in disbelief at this. Yeah. <laughs> they they get blood. They help save Blue. Uh, everyone's shipping out when they get to the mainland now. Oh, we'll we'll jump into the truck and, and we'll, we'll drive it. They're driving in convoy. They say, oh, we'll, we'll go to this neighbouring town. We'll phone the police and we'll, we'll get them up here. Oh, they get stopped at last minute. Oh, they've, they've been had. So somehow they knew where they were. Buffalo Bill saw them and knew it. Now, you did see one of the guard like, clock who was on there. Um, so it would raise the alarm. So they get captured. They they go to Hoggett Lockwood's estate. <laughs> <laughs> they get thrown into dinosaur prison, along with all the other dinosaurs, uh, while everything else is going on. Now, obviously, we've had to skip out some parts, like... Um, uh, the Rex waking up. Well, more things like uh, Doctor Wu... Um, Has Doctor Who been in it at this part? Yeah. Because uh, the, they've, they've been talking about Blue because we had the little girl go down into, oh, into yes, the of lab. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Watch yes. the videos of Owen with Blue. Oh, those videos are cool. Mm. And, and so on and so forth. But, like, it's all just a bit... Uh, like, there, there's a lot of people activity in this and not a lot of dinosaur activity in the film as a whole, is there? But then you've got all these high ranking criminal people going into this one estate. They're all very very stereotypes. Like you've got you've got like the the Russian You've got kind pretty of, much every terrorist leader there, let's be honest. Yeah. You've got like the classic Russian with the Russian bad guy look of just leather jacket yeah. and teeth missing. And... Sidorovich and so on and so forth. Yeah, well. you've got like the Texan oil tycoon. Yeah, I couldn't believe he was there. Bloody with hell. the with the Stetsons, <laughs> you, you've got that little Texas Longhorn with a bit of string that goes around. The I swear, he's the shirt. same 
Texan rich guy from The Simpsons. The Simpsons All he yeah. needed was a couple of pistols stuck like, yeehaw, shooting into the air. <laughs> um, you, you've got your Eurasian investors. Arabs. Uh, a lot. Yeah, you've got Arabs. Uh, so you know, <laughs> it's, it's all the stereotypes, and they're all there. And it's like, hmm. And then, uh, then they start au- auctioning off these dinosaurs, and you know whoever paid, like, was it forty grand for four hundred grand for an ankylosaur? They got a good deal. They got a good deal on that. It'd be a fantastic home defense creature with that. Hopefully, you won't want it like roaming <laughs> the hallways like a Doberman or something. With a great big tail. <laughs> no, I was thinking more on the grounds. Yeah. <laughs> We don't want to take Smithies away our dinosaur. Release that dinosaur. The way of the T Rex. And then uh, you've got Owen and Claire in a cell. Um, and just when they're about to give up hope, our dinosaur next door wakes up. Just so happens to have the hard head. It was a sticky bollock. Yeah, the, st- <laughs> the sticky <laughs> bollock. Um, <laughs> The Stiggy Moloch, a younger relative of the Pachycephalosaur. So they managed to get it to, to break through the cell and then to break through the cell door. Right, we've got out. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously all other manner of things happen at the end, which if you want to see it, just watch the trailers. But now the film as a whole, hmm. um, there's, there's, it's a good popcorn film, but there's a lot of tech issue with it. Obviously. Yeah, you, now, you made that abundantly clear before it even got to the frigging car after yeah. watching it. Now, whereas the first Jurassic World was a homage to Jurassic Park, I found this that one... That first park was legit. Yeah. <laughs> you know someone had to say this. It. <laughs> this, I found, paid a, a big homage to the Lost World. Whereas you've got... You've got all the dinosaurs... That free roaming on the island. You've got Team One that comes in. You've got them meeting up with Team Two. One wants to save the dinosaurs. One wants to take the dinosaurs. Hmm. And you've you've got the angry hunter guy that wants his trophies. Except one wants a T Rex. The other one wants just teeth. Yeah, just starts pulling teeth. And Roland was a lot more cautious than that. Fella, whatever his name was, Buffalo Bill. Dude. Buffalo Bill, yeah, yeah. Ro- Roland was a lot more cautious. Yes. Well, he w- he was he was a proper hunter. Whereas so out of the two, I know which one I'd rather Buffalo follow. Buffalo Bill was just an army dude, just army who had a I fetish believe. for teeth. Yeah, which is weird. But then so was Buffalo Bill. Mm, true. Just no death head moths in this. No. Um. I found, uh, well, the, the subplot with the girl is that, uh, yeah, oh, it turns out she's a clone of Lockwood's dead granddaughter. Oh, no, dead no, wife. Dead... No, it's his daughter, sorry. Her mother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Well, technically not a mother. But... Earlier on in the film, the girl says, oh, did my, did my mum ever go to the park? And he says, yes, and she would say it saved everyone. Which made you think, oh, oh, is she connected? She's been to the park before. Hmm. Some people were speculating, could this be Lex's daughter? Lex is in... Lex from original yeah. Jurassic Park. No, I've not park. heard that. Haven't you? No, no. I had quite oh. a lot. Because it's like, oh, it, it's it's a link. She's been there before. Is it someone we've seen before? She's been to the, the park before. But no, it turns out it's a completely irrelevant person. Mm. They, they could have done a lot more with that. Mm. But they didn't. That, that cheesy line she delivers as well. There, there's, a, I mean, there's a few cheesy. I mean, there's good actors in the film, but mm. I don't know if it was the writing compared with how they played mm. it off. I mean, kids can be difficult as far as good actors go. Oh no, the, the cheesy like the cheesy bit with her it wasn't her acting. It was the line that she had to say. Out no, loud. that would be the whole like uh, dinosaur genocide at the end. Yeah, exactly. They're alive, and, just like me. Yeah, so, what a cheesy line. So it's the way she said it because they're alive, and then she like looks at like oh, and it goes like me. Yeah, it's like, ugh, ruined it. Cheese. Ruined it. 
Uh, so, but then that that comes the whole point at the end. Like these dinosaurs get released into the wild, and uh, sneaky T Rex makes an appearance again. Yes, to, in probably his best part of the movie. Yeah, because uh, obviously you got one dinosaur stalking uh, Rafe's ball, mm. and then. And I, if I remember rightly, it attacks, but then Sneaky Rex comes back in and, like, they, they like pull him in half and have, like, half each, and then T Rex sees the other one off or something. Was it that? Oh, I, can't. I think it was that. I, I, thought, think it was that. I thought it was the other way. So I went to attack him, and T Rex basically barged him out of the way and grabbed Lockwood no, himself. Been that. Oh, I can't been that. But again, Sneaky Rex comes back in. Uh, just appears out of nowhere despite the fact everyone knows when Rex walks it's does the stereotypical end of the film I'll roar into the air yeah uh, before, that's become a staple you can't really pick on that before wandering off now then at the end you see some dinosaurs uh, were still contained and they're going to the, the prospective buyers mm. who bought them uh, but then the dinosaurs that you see escaping, apart from the T Rex Blue, um, the other one, <laughs> were a load of herbivores. And what they say, what 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 Ian Malcolm's saying at the end is that, like, oh, they're in the world now. They we, were here before us, and if we're not careful, we'll be here after us. We have to, we have to coexist. Uh, this is Jurassic World. Mm. But then that wouldn't be true. Like, you have like 12 species of dinosaur mm. escape. You're not going to throw in the town and go, oh, well, that's it, dinosaurs just have to live with us now. Well, no, they're going to die, aren't they? they? They will be captured. You'll have trophy hunters that will want them. But essentially, they'll be captured and taken wherever. But no, these, these few dinosaurs get out and they're like, Oh, we have to coexist with these now. That's it. There's no stopping them. It's like, well, there is. I mean, they're not gonna. Don't forget the Mosasaur, though. Yeah, well, well, it's already out. That got out at the beginning. Didn't it? Yeah, but you don't see it in the in the regular world until yeah, right at the end. That's in this sea, isn't it? Yeah. But but it's it's going to be a bit harder to track down. But then there was actually an after credits scene. That we didn't see because we left during the credits. I've actually it was, watched it. it. Was, yeah, it was and pointless. It's not lost. Yeah, it's literally five seconds. It shows the um, Las Vegas Strip hmm. and about four or five pteranodons perched, well, flying in and perching on the tallest building there, hmm. and then it goes to the credits again. Yeah, it was like a long drawn out process. It was basically for just nothing. It was basically just saying, look, here's pterodactyls. They might be in the next movie. But I mean it. Like, if this is the way Jurassic Park's going, I'm not holding high hopes for the next one. Well, they have said mm. the next one is going to be the last one and there will not be any hybrids in it. It's still not the point, though. I mean... No, but that's what we know to expect for definite. Like... It's the last in the trilogy and there won't be any more hybrids. The Indominus Rex in the first Jurassic World was um, was more of a threat than the Indoraptor in this one. I think if the Indoraptor had been given more time to fully flesh out... But then it wasn't out, as big, I suppose. If it had had more time to flesh out, like the Indominus had, I reckon it would be as big as... Because See, it's smaller, it can hide easier. When Owen kicked down the door of the little girl's room and shot it a few times, it did... Uh, it, it cowered. Because he injured it. Mm. And it kind of, like, cowered down. It wasn't until he tried to fire it again, and, and it, it wasn't firing, that it started, like, Getting taking for its dominance again, I suppose. Like, it's alpha status. Mm. But it, it had been shown it was the weaker one as he mm. shot it. Um, but then it kind of, like, whooped its thing. But then and there was, the like, the whole, the whole fight thing and falling through the glass and... It will attack this laser we, beam we, like a cat. Yeah, I was going to say, we have to address the whole laser beam attack system that got implemented into it, because that was just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like you, you run the laser pen around your, your floor and the dog or the cat chases it. Yeah, it's essentially, like, this, this special gun pointed a laser 
Uh, it wasn't okay. a special gun. It was. It, no, it was. was. It was a gun. Yeah. But well, it was like it a was, gun there machine. Were thing, it was. The gun didn't actually shoot anything. Things attached to the rifle. Yeah. Basically, it pointed a laser at the target, which the Indoraptor would then stop and focus on. And the minute they pressed the button, the machine would make a... A noise. A like noise. A of, like, noise. Yeah, really high-pitched noise. And that would send the Indoraptor into an attack frenzy which, on whatever the... if you the added a lot of bass out. into it and turned the sound out, it would say, him, him, get him. Yeah, That's basically. what that sound would say. <laughs> but, but, attack, get him, get him. <laughs> the film itself, it, I found it entertaining but poor but then that's coming from like a a strong Jurassic Park fan and a hell of a film critic I didn't like this direction that the film had taken I didn't like how everything was ruined in the trailers at the beginning bar the whole subplot of the little girl I found the acting quite weak I found some of it to be well I didn't see much of the chemistry between Owen and Claire, like the first one had. But then, yeah, they were, they were on a break or whatever. I'm just hoping the third one, they haven't split up again, because then it'll just be repeating um, the other scene screen movies. Oh, aye. David Arquette and Courtney Cox get together, and then in the second film, they split up for whatever reason, but then by the end of the film, they're back together. And then in the third film, they split up again, and then by the end of the film, they're back together again. Yeah, just like in real life, cause they were dating for a while, weren't they? When they married, they, they married, yeah, yeah. But they only they only split up the once, and it was permanent. Yeah. Um, but then, like when uh, Lockwood found out that uh, Rafe's ball was doing all this like auction thing right under his own nose, mm. and it was like, "There's a phone over there on that pillow. I want you to phone the police." And then there was a whole now. It was these kind of off. Uh, off main plot things that were like was was this wrote by a soap opera writer <laughs> it was like the camera focuses in on on the mobile phone as he picks it up and he goes he, he says something cheesy and then the bit which I saw coming straight away where he picks the cushion up and he walks towards Lockwood, smothering with it. It's like, oh, really? And the camera's really? in on the cane as it falls and breaks. Yes, and there's a slow motion cane hitting the floor, and the amber breaks. And the mosquito flies in like five different directions. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that was that was just some bad everything. Bad <laughs> writing, bad direction, bad camera work. <laughs> it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was poor. And then... Yeah, there's a, there's a little girl saying, like, they're alive, like me. It's like, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> oh! Um, but, yeah. Hey, are was... you, Joe, on this podcast saying that you were wishing the death of a little girl no more than nine years old? Now, she's a clone. Had she been on the island, would the lawyers say, oh, well... She has to come off because she's a person. We'll, we'll they leave the say, dinosaur. They, no, they would have said exactly that. Human rights and all that. But then... Dinosaurs really? have no rights, they're extinct. They can't even be covered by animal rights because they shouldn't exist. But then the girl is a clone. Of a person. As, who... as well, as are the dinosaurs. Mm. So would they be like, no, get the dinosaurs back to the island, take that little girl with them, and drop them there? No, actually, there is a difference. The little girl was a clone. Of Lockwood's daughter in it's exactly every way, whereas the dinosaurs were mismatched. They have ge- they had genetic sequences completely replaced as to what they should have been. But if sequence. everything was entirely different, they mean, weren't clones yes. as such as creations. Like Doctor Wu said that if we created the dinosaurs, how they, would they look were so much different, so much differently. However, in the first Jurassic Park film, they are digging up. A Velociraptor, yeah. which is the same size and everything as the ones that are on the That's island. That's what you call a movie mistake. Yeah, well... This is where Cinema Sins comes in and goes, ding! It's all Cinema Sins. Like Martin was saying earlier, it's it's a film about dinosaurs coming back to life. Mm. Martin looks like he's about to fall asleep. Not quite. So he hasn't really contributed yet. much, has he? No, but he's, Wake been, up. he's been drinking a lot. So. <laughs> um, Lightweight. But, 
No, I mean... Yeah, he had, you too, buddy. He had, like, four beers in the time it took us to plug their headphones in. Because <laughs> <laughs> he can't pace himself, that's no, all it is. No, he rushes into it. Um, I'm hoping that wasn't picked up on the microphone. No, it would have been. <laughs> Damn it. But, yeah, uh, I, d- I just found the drama in the film to be too either cliche and very soap opera. It's very Emmerdale, very <laughs> Coronation Street. <laughs> it's like, oh no, my sheep have been killed by a velociraptor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for the, uh... Said no one in Emmerdale, even with that kind of accent. I believe. I don't watch it. I don't know. Neither do I. Um, so, yeah, I, I just found a lot of the, the writing and then subsequently the directing to be very poor in that respect. And it, it cheapened the film more. Hmm. To be honest, for me, it was the entire creation of the Indoraptor. You've got an Indominus Rex, which is already in itself a hybrid of a T-Rex and a Raptor. And then you just install more raptor in it. So it's three quarter raptor, well, one quarter T-Rex. They already established in the first um, Jurassic World that the idea was to create the Indominus as uh, its own condensed thing. It's just in the second one, they just did it. Yeah, it was Hoskins who had that idea though. And if you recall, he got eaten by well, uh, yeah, he one of the raptors. The idea, but that was an idea of the company, wasn't it? Uh, I, see. I still think it was a, a better. A, they, they should have put something else in there to give it a bit more flavour, mm. like um, a Deinonychus, for example, or or even a Uteraptor. That would have been interesting. Now, if a Velociraptor is the size of a Uteraptor, imagine how big a Uteraptor. A would Uteraptor be. wasn't the uh, Velociraptor wasn't the size of a Uteraptor. It was the size of a Deinonychus. So is your face. No, the Velociraptor was the size of chicken. No, the Jurassic Park raptors. Oh, right, I see, I see. They were the size of Deinonychus, and the real-life velociraptors were the size of turkeys, not chickens. Compsognathus was the size of a chicken. <laughs> Compies in the Lost World, you know, the little Those things. not monsters that kill that dude in that river. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not monsters. Yes, those. Compsognathus, Compies. The, the Russian, Swedish guy. <laughs> what? In the Lost oh, Deep, World. Dieter Stark. Yeah, yeah, but he speaks with an American accent. Yeah, but in real life, I think it's sweet. Fair enough. That was that's something I've I've always wanted to um, figure out is how they killed him. They ate him. Yeah, but how? They just with their faces. Him. Multiple times you saw them jump on him, and both times let's say multiple, but twice they jumped on him in big numbers, and both mm. times he just stood up and shook them off as if it was nothing. Yeah, there, there were too many. He fell over. He fell over a log. Well, he didn't even fall over. He climbed over it, and then they jumped over the log, and then you just hear him scream, and he's dead. It's like, what? What? Why didn't you just stand maybe, up and shake him off again? Maybe it's just a pussy, and he just keeled over and just let him. That's the too. only thing I can think of. He just gave up and was like, oh, fuck it, kill me. Because yeah. there's, no, there's no reason he shouldn't have been able to just stand up and shake him off again like he did the previous two times. Interestingly, <laughs> just speaking of uh, Jurassic World, I've been watching a series of, of videos on YouTube of mm. some guys that <clears throat> bought the original screen-used um, RV. You know, the, the twin Oh, truck, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and restore it back to its actual nice. film-looking self. And mm. it looked like a lot of effort. And mm. some would really be awesome. computers. Uh, well, more like just getting the whole thing up and running and... Mm. painted up to look how it was but it was like really interesting I did like Ian Malcolm's underwhelming announcement that they were about to get smashed into hold on this is going to be bad (laughs) yeah there's a whole thing uh, in the Lost World wasn't there about well how did that work where there's there's a car there was two Mercedes uh, Jeeps Mm. that they had Mm. there one was holding the the truck and trailer from going over the edge of the cliff. The other one had already been sent flying over yes. by the Rexes on their first What appearance. was keeping the high hide up in the trees? 
Because that needed the winch off a truck to keep it up there. Could they not just tie it onto the tree? Mm. Well, no, the winch is attached to the Jeep. Ah, uh, yeah. You don't just, like, take it off and wrap it around a tree quickly before it plummets. Where Ian, well, well no, uh, it was the little girl that's, that's up there. She's uh, left in it, yeah. She's left Eddie in Carr it. Eddie gets munched. So it's like, but there's only two Jeeps. One's off the edge of the cliff and one's holding mm. the, the truck. Uh, have they just, like, with all these T-Rexes attacking, have they lowered the high hide? And he just said, oh, just stay there. I'll go and rescue your folks. I can't imagine that. So, you know, probably just, just a little movie oversight. inconsistency hmm. little, little thing there. But Jurassic World 2, overall, again, enjoyable, but not particularly great. After hmm. the first Jurassic World, quite a bit of a letdown. Yeah. My, but watchable. What are your final thoughts? He has thoughts? Sometimes. I do have them occasionally. If I didn't read that much into it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> to be honest, I, I liked it. It was, a, it was a good sort of good old-fashioned sort of popcorn action movie. You know, a bit of, sort of like campy science fiction stuff. It was good. It can't be campy popcorn actioning without the rock in it, though. <laughs> Maybe the rock was the T Rex. No. See, the rock's got longer arms than that T Rex. Well, maybe that's what because the T Rex is like yeah. So that the rocks is the rocks like flexing all the time. Isn't the it? rock's hedge. I I don't know what that means. Built muscular. Does that mean I can get some water in my glass? Uh, yeah, yeah. we'll do in a minute. Oh, thank you. Um. Well, so a good film. Yeah. What well, would you give it out of five? Three and a half. Four. Or do we say ten? Do we rate our films normally five or out of ten? ten? No, ten out gives us ten. more scope. So eight. How many? How many Rexes would you give it? I would give the red-headed chick at least eight Rexes. No, I'm on about the film in general. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah, eight out of ten. Eight. Wow. Yeah. What would you give the last Jurassic World? The first one? Yeah. Eight and a half, nine. Mm. But I'm doing this in a scale of Jurassic Park movies. I mean, in movies in general, that's a different different thing, isn't it? Well, on how you enjoyed the movie. How I enjoyed it. As far as Jurassic Park goes, and as far as fitting in with the franchise, I'm going to go with eight for Jurassic World 2, eight and a half for Jurassic World 1. Right. Jamie. For the second one, I'd only give it 6.5. Because, mm. see, when I've watched the movie, when you first watch the movie at the cinema, I have the problem is I'm, I'm blown away always. By, and when I come out of the cinema, I'm like, wow, best movie ever. It's only yeah, once I've gone home like, and gone to sleep. You two, when we got in the car and we started driving, you two started still, saying, We were still riding the high. Ha- yeah, riding that high and saying how good it was. And then it's only like a I day or so opinion. later well, that you I You were a moody prick as soon as you got out the doors. You were. Well, it... it and I, uh, it, it, ripped, <laughs> it rippled my glass of water the wrong way. <laughs> so yeah, but the the first Jurassic World, I'd have to give it a full nine Rexes because the only problems nine. I had with the first one. No, I just had this vision of him looking at the film, going, "That is one big pile of shit." <laughs> the the only real problems I had with Jurassic World were the silly little things, like, well, I think the biggest glaring one has to be. Claire running away from the T-Rex in, in heels. high heels. Yeah. Only silly little things like that, but Classic. as far as the plot Classic. and the film itself goes, I thought it was brilliant. Classic. So, uh, what what do you give the second one? Six and a half? Six, five. Six, five. Um, as films as a whole, see, so you rate the first Jurassic World as like really... Oh, compared to every really film good. ever made, or that you in... that you say, or films that you really enjoy. Oh right, okay. Um, yeah, I'd still put it up that high because, yeah. like you, I love dinosaurs. Yeah. So I'd mm. give the first Jurassic World. Uh, I'd give it a, a good eight. It's a good wow, eight. Wow, lower than I was expecting. But eight still like high though. It's mm. it's not like your tens. It's not like. What I would perceive to be ten films for Give one me an reason or another. Of 10. See, I I have different 
entire... ideas of what. Yeah, I know you do. I want to get your example. Give just give me a, no uh, give no description of why. Just an example of a ten. Uh, Jurassic Park, the original. Yeah, I can't fault that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jurassic World Two. Uh, I'd I'd give about a six. No, it's just slightly lower. And it's uh, it's like um. It's a, you've done all right, six, but you're not six and a half. <laughs> so, yeah, so quite different opinions, quite different opinions. Nice. Martin's in the form of his uh, just good old classic popcorn. Mm. You've looked into it a bit more and you picked up on the little things and... yeah. I picked up on them little things, but they they stuck with me as it's little no, things tend to do. It's no use asking me to critique. This is why I don't think doing this podcast on the way home from movie would be a good idea because because he's still riding that high. Yeah, yeah. I, I need a day or two okay. to adjust and really analyze what I've seen. Okay, I, I, can, I can I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Mm. Why aren't you pulling a face? Well, that's the thing. When when you come out of the cinema. And when that feeling you get coming out of the cinema, that's why you go to watch the cinema. It's like... Oh, you, yeah. You go out and you have a drink, right? You go out and have a drink for the feeling you have whilst you're having the drink. Yeah, not for You don't want itself. to wait for 24 hours to analyse the hangover afterwards, do you? No, but 24 hours after you've been out and had that drink, or maybe a bit longer, you think, well, I could have done that for a lot cheaper at home. Yeah, but you still. But what I'm saying is, you enjoy the taste but of when the you're beverage. At home, you enjoy you don't throw the effect up of, a bin. of the beverage, but you don't enjoy the after effect of the beverage. Yeah, so but, what I'm saying is, I enjoy the film. I enjoy the high after the film, but then afterwards, when you're trying to think, well, actually, that dinosaur wouldn't be so able to do that. My, then, when you came out of Solo, how did you feel about it? Is there any difference to how you felt about it later on? <laughs> That's a difficult one because I had two feelings coming out of Solo. The first one is... I need the loo. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. feeling of oh, moisture oh, 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 in I, your I, nethers. I had three feelings. All right, first one is, yes, I need to evacuate my winkle. <laughs> the, the second one was that cameo at the end was awesome and he's cool. No, I'm not saying so, I don't. I don't know. And he's not, he, he doesn't Neither of us have seen it, so no. I'm not bothered, but he's There is a know. character that appears at the end of Solo where you're like, it's fucking awesome. Is it Boba Fett? Is it Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> <laughs> it is neither of those two. Oh, well, I'm not bum, interested bum, bum. then. It, you will be interested in, in, in this. The Jabba the Hutt. In this person. <laughs> anyway. anyway, no. That, that there was cool moments in it, but the thing with that is, the more I analysed it, the more I realised that even when I was watching it, I I didn't I liked some of the characters, but I just didn't like Han Solo. Han Solo was crap in that film. He's got from like the cheeky womanising rogue to a complete just turd. We can't really address why that is without breaking into politics, so let's just move on. Well, it's not <laughs> politics. It's the it's fact not. It's just that he's Disney a, ruining everything. It's just yeah. It's like let's have this uber legend Millennium Falcon flying dude, or should we mould Mister Hanky into <laughs> a Han Solo like shape and go here? You go have a blast here. And that's it. Another way of looking at it is we've got this dude that everyone loves, but he's a bit of a rogue, cheeky, bit of a bad and bit of a womanizer. Certain groups won't like that. We better change who he is so as not to offend anyone. So that's like turning around and saying, here's men in black. We're going to have the uber confident, really cocky, a little bit funny Agent J, but we're going to replace him with that dude that tries to recruit Ryan Reynolds in the first Deadpool. He's like... Oh, I'm going to get you to come and do my... No, nope. I see when going to get his hands cut off. What? What I'm saying... <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying is... Han Solo, in Solo, is shit. The film is good, but Han Solo is so shit. So it's a character that's bad. It, the portrayal of Han Solo, the main character, the title character is Pooh. Chewbacca's awesome... 
the weird chick, Daenerys Targaryen, she's awesome. And that Woody Harrelson is awesome. Well, Woody Harrelson's awesome, man. Every, everyone else is awesome, but Han Solo is shit. Oh, Lando Carizian, he's almost as shit as Han Solo. <laughs> so the two to be young, the, like the, the, the Solo. Two, the two important characters in that film are crap. They're portrayed bad. They're not what they're original. They've just pooed all over them. How many Millennium Falcons would you give Solo? <laughs> I would strap Han Solo to the side of, say, a small moon-shaped object. <laughs> and That's f- no moon. And I, and I would fly the Millennium Falcon into that moon the space station. whilst he was t- tied to it. So you wouldn't give Solo any rating? The film, I will give a small rating. Solo, the character... Yeah, we're talk- and we're talking about the film. film as a whole. Uh, oh, the film as a whole. Out of ten, three. how many Falcons would three. you get? Three. three. Let, let's put it this way. I would rather be locked in a room with Jar Jar Binks for 24 hours than to watch that film. Again. Okay, so he's not going to watch that with you. So, <laughs> so Jurassic World 2. Yes. Well, I think, <laughs> I think, I think we've pretty much covered I think we've it. covered everything there. Yeah. Well, this well, has been... Interesting. Mm-hmm. Off on a tangent there a bit. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, discuss a, a series of films that have been a bit of a letdown. More for so for me. Mm. You've enjoyed Jurassic World 2, Martin, more than others. Yeah. Yeah, we'll it's go cool. with that. I'll go we'll with that. that. All right, well, that is that. And we'll see what happens next time. When Martin's finished picking his nose. I was just about to say. I don't know. I'll see if this all comes of a prize. A bit sticky. Okay. <laughs> Everyone wants to say goodbye now. Goodbye. Adios. Ciao. For now.